hello 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 and welcome to another video we are getting into the eclipse energy for april and we're going to take a look and we're going to pull some oracle cards from this new beautiful deck that i've been using the unlocking the secret garden oracle i love these cards look how gorgeous they are just beautiful let me turn i think i have too much light coming in just that just a little so we get a little bit of a and then survive there we go yes so i'm in love with this i think they're the most gorgeous cards and they're perfect for that springtime vibe so we are going to get in to it i'm going to pull cards for every sign and we're just going to do one card per sign unless two come out you know sometimes like to be extra and this is a brand new deck, so it's still a little particular sometimes. Okay. I was thinking I should have like pulled the cards prior, but I always like kind of shuffling the cards on the deck. And pull four at a time. Oh, these are oh they're so pretty. I love them. Okay. One more. For Cancer. So we're going to have three sets that we'll move through. Okay, let's take a look and see what we get. So for number 25 up to 7. So we're going to be breaking out of some shelves for our Aries. 25 discernment we've got a pretty owl on here we've got a gorgeous looks like maybe a camellia as the poet once said people show you who they are believe them the first time discernment is the key that unlocks opportunity that we may want what we want with wild passion only the young and naive rush into a situation without testing this authenticity first testing situations relationships and people doesn't make you a hard ass it makes you a good guardian of your sovereignty Unwilling to trade up, trade away the treasure of your being without reciprocity and deservedness. Refuse to be blinded by your own desire and other people's good intentions. Neither are enough for you to accept less than your worth. You must get up from the table when love is no longer being served. Use your sense of discernment to determine what opportunities and relationships are worthy of you. All right, so that's for our lovely Aries. We have self-trust for our tourists. Taurus. Look how pretty. And the book, the book is gorgeous. Like, just gorgeous. So here's self-trust. Okay. Now's not the time to question anyone or anything outside of you. Unlocking this moment happens with the key of self-trust, which requires introspection. What kind of parent are you to your precious inner child? What kind of lover are you towards your soul? Are you your own best friend, cheerleader, caregiver? The only way we develop self-trust is to endeavor to love and serve the life for force within us. Yet we've suffered many blows to our own self-directed esteem, compassion, and forgiveness. This situation asks you to be the friend to yourself that you would be to the one you love the most. It asks you to become the one you love the most. That's not selfish. That's being loyal to the gift the great giver has bestowed upon you. All right, Taurus. We have Keeper of Love for Gemini. Ooh, and that card is beautiful. Okay, let's see. The Keeper of Love knows that you deserve the love you keep giving. You keep giving to everyone else. All relationships are an extension of the one we nourish, or not, between our soul and our physicality. Do you need tending right now? Are there issues in your love relationships? Do you currently feel nurtured, valued, and protected in your family of choice? Evaluating your love needs from the root of the issue, the love between you and you, is the key to unlocking what's before you. You teach people how to treat you. Let's see if I can. Sorry, I'm moving her around. She's a little, there we go. She, she focused for a moment. Um, admit, admit it to your very own self and then look for ways you can show up to your own needs with love, nurture, and inclusion. 
Become an embodiment of the keeper of love and lavish your life with tender tenderness. You deserve nothing less. And then lastly, for number four, for our cancers, the fourth sign, we have the keeper of the waves. Oh, this sounds watery. Very appropriate for our lovely cancers. She has a little fish above her too. How cute. Okay. The keeper of waves is here to encourage you to honor your natural rhythms. The high tides and the low tides both have a purpose for your growth. Allow them to ebb and flow as they need to. Don't judge the shores of your life based on how much shell treasure is on the beach, how high the water is, or how dry the sand has become. Make room for the coming and going, the passion and depletion, the roar of the surf and the quiet lapping of the tide. And by all means, don't be afraid of making waves just by being yourself. The moon does it all the time. Is this not the most appropriate card for cancer? That just makes me really happy. Okay, let's take a look now then at our next four. Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. It's Leo. I should probably move this so that I don't... Oh, receive. I know that card. I do daily pulls on Instagram and on Facebook. So if you'd like to see daily oracle cards, follow me there, Camila Rose. seen keeper of time too that's for libra oh yes that was one of the cards for today okay scorpio our last one Ooh, these cards are cards are very slippery okay oh i was hoping someone would get this and the keeper of opportunity okay so 20 Leo's got receive. Receiving is an act of empowerment, though it can make you feel vulnerable, awkward, and indebted. As long as we define ourselves and our value by how much we give and what we can accomplish, we're off balance. Half our life is meant to be lived in receptivity, like breathe in and breathe out. We're busy producing all the time, which is the equivalent of exhaling all day without taking a breath in. And wonder why we're exhausted. Breathe in. Receive. Go one step further and declare your needs. Be willing to take in the same way you give out so that the breath of your life, your very vitality, can circulate in its natural rhythms. Be open to receiving, Leos. Take some time to rest. Take some time to breathe in. Take some time to let other people care for you. For our Virgos, pretty green card. And Virgos got create number 30. It is time to dig in, dive deep, create. The key right now is in the creative dream doing. Dance your pain, chant your victories, paint your revelations, sculpt your visions. Create a moment with an intimate friend or immersive experience with a group of kindred spirits. Whatever it is that hums beneath the surface of your everyday awareness is seeking a way into the world. Now is the time to become that way. Don't judge the result. Don't even consider whether or not it's valuable. Just create. The creation itself will reveal your next steps. Love that. All right, Libras, we got Keeper of Time, and this one is all about how we use our time and how we understand time. Look how pretty though, these beautiful, gorgeous flowers. The keeper of time is showing up today to remind you that time is your most valuable resource. You can always create more love, friendship, money, and wellness, but time is limited on this human plane. Make sure you're spending it consciously, filling your moments with meaning, not just memories. Infuse your days with a sense of purpose, not the thing they told you that you were here to do, but the purpose of presence. Soulful presence is its own reward and invites you to step into the power of now, where all your meaning takes place. Be present. Planning is important, but...
But if planning or reminiscing about the past, being focused on the past, takes you out of the present, release that. Because it's not helping you to actually get where you need to be, and you'll miss out. You'll miss out on opportunities from being present. For Scorpios, we got the Keeper of Opportunity. There's an old Scottish proverb that goes, What is for ye will not go by ye. This faith is the key to seizing opportunity. When the Keeper of Opportunity visits, you do best to remember that opportunities sometimes make themselves, sometimes make themselves, and sometimes it's our diligence that creates them. Either way, it's best to knock on the door of possibility whenever it shows up. If it doesn't open, it's not your door. You don't have to worry about failure or bad luck. It's either not your time or not your door. Either way, let it go. But when you see the door close and the window open, dive through. When all the windows are shielded shut, but the door opens a smidge, put your foot in it and refuse to let it close. The only thing you need to remember is your own bravery. The only promise you need to make is the one that says you refuse to feel shame over things that don't work out. They weren't for you anyway. Let go of the things that didn't work out. Embrace the things that are coming in for you, Scorpio. That was big on your reading for the month of April in general, which was if you allow yourself to let go, Scorpio, you will be in this new space. You will be in this place of success. Like your card was, your reading was so amazing, amazing for the month of April, Scorpio, but it all hinged on you're allowing yourself to let go of the past. pretty one prepare follow through keeper of the harvest that's for Aquarius one more Pisces okay oh and keeper of pleasure for Pisces gorgeous okay ah so this is Sagittarius got 35 prepare Look at this. Like, like, is that not the prettiest thing in the world? Okay. And that's a little squirrel. Oh, squirrel's putting away food for the winter. Stocking up and staying prepared. Okay. It is time to lay the groundwork. Whatever it is you're facing, preparedness is the key to success. It's time to fortify your path by preparing the way. Look to your infrastructure. Check your details. Honor your commitments by doing good research. No one can predict when success will visit, but we can certainly prepare the way by building a solid foundation. Just like the squirrel spends most of his time preparing for the lean months, you too can gather your resources so that your projects, relationships, and goals are fortified with thoughtfulness. Don't let yourself skip details, or you may find yourself missing something essential once the momentum begins. So prep. You have your goals, you have your things you're working towards, Get ready. Add the things together. Do the research. Be ready. Be prepared, Sagittarius. Even if you're liking to fly by the seat of your pants, you want that adventure, you want that freedom. The preparation will allow you to actually have that freedom and not have emergencies or things of that nature come up that throw you off. Okay. 33. Follow through. This is also the card for today. It's time to follow through. No amount of dreaming. And this is the card for Capricorn. Oh, Capricorns. Okay. It's time to follow through. No amount of dreaming, intending, or progress making can bring a goal to its fulfillment. You must honor your promises by following through with action all the way to the end. Have you dropped the ball? Are you experiencing inertia because you've abandoned the hard work? This isn't a, a moment about lack of intention or imagination. You've made it through those long hallways of creativity, and the last phase is to get the birthing done. There's a lot of sweat equity and pushing required to get a new life safely delivered into the world. Honor your commitments, especially those you have made to yourself. Review them. Edit them if they no longer feel compelling to you, but keep the ones that feel radiant and fall through all the way to the end. That first school of new life will be worth all the push. For Capricorns, and particularly for this um, card, when I think of the follow through and of the importance of reviewing and knowing what's worth continuing to put time and effort towards and what needs to be released, I think is a really important message for Capricorns because you have that Saturn tenacity and endurance. You will keep going towards something regardless of how difficult or horrible it is, but sometimes you're climbing up a mountain that is just not to say that it's impossible, but that like, is it worth getting to the top? Because is it even what you truly want? Is it even what you truly desire? Or is it just something that seems 
like it would be interesting to attain. I think just having that clarity of what you really want to put your time and energy and effort towards and what you want to stay in commitment to is really important. That is the devil energy of understanding the ties that bind you and if it's worth staying in that commitment. Sometimes you have to let the chains go. Okay. Plus, Capricorn and Cancer are dealing with the tension, the squares of the North Node, South Node in Libra, Aries axis. And you're also going to be dealing with this activation of this, all of this Aries energy that's happening with the Sun in Aries, Mercury going retrograde in Aries, Venus is moving through Aries, Mars will eventually be moving through Aries, Aries and Mars energy is very active. And you're dealing with the tension, the pull of that. So it's not, while it's not directing you, it may not be in conjunction or in opposition. It's an even, it can be an even more tense energy to work with because it's a pool that's outside of your nature, outside of your natural, um, proclivity of how to like interact and engage with energy. Okay. Aquarius, you got keeper of the harvest. Number five. And the keeper of the harvest. This is such a beautiful card. There's bees and sunflowers. When the keeper of the harvest is in your reading, she brings alchemy. Ooh. You also have that Pluto that's moving through your chart. And then in May 2nd, we have Pluto going retrograde. So it will be in your in Aquarius at the very beginning degrees of Aquarius for a couple of a bit longer. And then it will retro be starting on this journey back to retrograding back into Capricorn. So again, not to bring up Capricorn when I'm talking about Aquarius, but you do, you too do share that Saturn energy. And so Capricorn is again, there may be, especially for those final degrees in Capricorn folks, this kind of rocking of your world and this needing to kind of reassert, reassess your situation, recommit to things. All right. So Bees are nature's alchemists, making honey from pollen, turning base flower materials into liquid gold. Long associated with the goddess, the bees invite you to work your own alchemy, to take the sorrows and disappointments of your life and turn them into grace, experience, and wisdom. It's time to invoke compassion for yourself. You must remember there will be times when you will, could not possibly have known or done better and must forgive your own ignorance. When you know better but don't do better, self-compassion can help you grasp what the underlying trauma might be that prevents you from acting with integrity. Self-compassion and understanding are galvanizing forces of transformation and self-cultivation. You're being invited to alchemize your pain and disappointments rather than sink into the stagnant gravity of self-condemnation. Aquarius, be kind to yourself. Transform. Pluto is eventually going to fully move through your sign. It's going to take a couple of years, a good amount of years, about 10 years, 10, 15 years. It's going to take some time to move through. But as it does, it's going to transform things. It's going to pull you into different spaces. It's going to have you take a look at your life. Be willing to be brave and to be honest as you stare down into that face of rebirth, of chaos, and find the stability and ground within yourself. Okay? All right. So that's for Aquarius. And last but never least, we have our wonderful eight, the Keeper of Pleasure, a delightful card for our delightful Pisces. Indulging your pleasure is key to unlocking shame. We've been taught to steal our joy like a thief. We sneak chocolate. We steal time for our creative acts. We rarely put play on the calendar the way we do with work. We conduct a lot of our sex in the dark. But acts of pleasure are an essential part of the human experience and deserve to be indulged, honored, prioritized. The keeper of pleasure is here to remind you of the poet's derivative, directive. Follow your bliss. It's a means of directing you towards your soul's calling. When you experience pleasure, the kind that opens you up to radiance, you are moving towards your highest self. Whether it's making art, relaxing in nature, picking out a new pair of shoes, eating a cookie, or treating yourself to an orgasm, pleasure expands your well-being, health, and mental clarity. Time to have some fun, Pisces. And Pisces, your reading was very interesting as well. I can remember your reading for um, April just a bit, and it was really centered on doing some healing related to the mother um, and in finding that space where you can 
get in touch with this caring for yourself in this way, prioritizing, not sacrificing your inner child, the joy that comes from that, the freedom that comes from that, the invitation and invention that comes from that. I love it. All right. Well, that is going to be it for all of our signs. And happy eclipse. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. I love you. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.